Hiya! We're teaching tilt brush today, and to get started, before we even paint anything, we're going to need to learn about the controls themselves. What are the wands, what are the devices we use to create the pictures we want to create? There's a lot of different ways that we can create art, whether it's painting or creating sculpture, and there's a lot of computer tools we can use to make creating art easier. Things like copy and paste uh, makes creating a large work of art a little faster than doing everything by hand. So this lesson is about the tools themselves, the actual controllers used to create in Tilt Brush. Now in my case, I'm using the HTC Vive and the HTC Vive Wands as my controllers. This program works with Oculus Rift and Valve Index and their controllers as well. Almost everything will be exactly the same. All controllers will have finger triggers. Finger triggers. We'll be using those as our main inputs and things like that. All types of controllers have a grip. On the Vive, we've got the buttons for our fingertips. Oculus has a similar arrangement. The Valve Index actually has squeezable hands themselves. That is another input. We also have thumbs. Thumbs. The Index and the Rift use thumb joysticks, whereas we have thumb pads on the Valve. There are a couple of different ways we're going to be inputting with these, but we're going to be using all of those inputs. Now you can see the two hands are very different. I'm going to refer to one as the brush. It's the one where we're actually creating with. Since I'm right-handed, I'm putting the brush in my right hand. The left hand, in my case, is the palette. And it controls all of the tools and colors, not that I'm actually painting with, but that sets up my brush. So the colors I'm painting with, the size and uh, shapes that I'm painting with, that type of thing. Now, if you are left-handed, you can actually tap the bases and it swaps the controller and the brush. So not only does this work for left-handed, but an artist who doesn't have full use of both hands can be using their dominant hand to paint, get the controls they need, and go back to painting. So these controls are very versatile and a simple tap on the bottom lets you swap between the two controllers. I'm going to keep my brush in my right hand and my palette in the left hand. <clears throat> So let's focus on this brush here. It's supposed to be your paintbrush. Pressing and holding the trigger puts ink on the page, or in this case, light in the sky. It is a full three-dimensional, so as long as you keep your finger down, you are still painting. So you can make multiple marks, you can write little messages, draw little lines, all by using your finger trigger for making these lines happen. I'm going to clear this out. So the brush tool, your main dominant hand, that little point at the top there, that little arrow, is where it's going to take place. Now with your thumb, sliding it back and forth, or going left and right with a joystick, if you watch the very tip of my brush, there's a circle on the end. When I slide it one way, the circle gets bigger. When I slide it the other way, the circle gets smaller. That is the size. So at a small circle, I'm doing a fine line. At a large circle, I'm doing a much broader stroke. We can see a lot more of the texture at the larger size, that type of thing. So the main control for our brush hand, trigger finger to paint, thumb for the size of your brush, whether you want it smaller or larger, brush. The grip will be used as well, but we'll get to that in just a moment. But for the main painting, thumb for size, trigger for painting. The palette brush, you can see, has three different faces. It's also using the same controller, just in your other hand. One big difference is your trigger finger doesn't actually do anything. Sorry, hopefully it'll be used for features later, or we'll look in advanced features where we will be using it, but in general, we're not going to be trigger fingering this hand. The thumb, just like we slide action with this hand, if we slide action with this hand, we can rotate these palettes. So we can quickly flip to the one we're looking for and find what we want to use. With these palettes, two of them are these panels of buttons, options, with your brush hand, you can actually point 
to choose which of these options you want. We'll be covering the options specifically in later classes, but it's a two-hand thing. So if one hand is immobile, we need to use the brush hand to find the options we want. We'll slide and choose. The third palette, instead of buttons, the third palette is our colors. Anybody who's used a computer graphics program, many of them will do a color palette using this same system. Here's how it works. The color palette has two pieces, the big circle and this vertical bar. The vertical bar is basically dark to light. So if I use my brush and drag those markers down, I all the way down is black, as dark as it gets. All the way up is pure white, as light as it gets, white. Anywhere in the middle, and we start to get the intensity of the colors themselves. So this is just lighter or darker. The circle lets you choose exactly what color do you want. If you click up in the vibrant green, now I'm painting vibrant green. If I choose the hot pink, we'll make it a pale hot pink or perhaps a dark blue. So the color palette, the circle is the shade, the hue you're looking for, and the vertical bar is the actual light to dark value that you're looking for. So a combination of the two. Final note, towards the edge of the circle, you get these vibrant, intense colors. Towards the center of the circle, is your gray colors. So saturation is the term. Vibrant colors towards the outside, vibrant blue. Gray colors towards the inside. So it's a juggling act to find the exact shade of the color you want, but this lets you get almost any color that exists. So whether you're painting with light or oil paint or sheets of paper, we can choose whatever color we want for our brush tool. Choose the setting, trigger finger painting. That's the gist of it. The final piece of the puzzle are your grips. By themselves, they're not doing very much. But if I grip both my fingers, you know how on a phone you can use your fingers to slide to make things smaller or push to make things bigger? If I grip and bring them together, the world gets smaller. If I grip and spread them apart, the world gets bigger. So I can do fine detail and then shrink it down and do large pieces. So grips, not only can you make it bigger, smaller, but now we can rotate the whole world. As you use a lot of practice, you can both move it and make it bigger, smaller. Let's get it behind me here big pieces. You can see it's now landscape size. Or I can bring it in smaller, 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 and now it's a little tiny piece of art. So with our controllers, one hand is to paint and control size of your brush. The other hand is your color palette. Brightness, darkness, shades of color. I'm being overwhelmed by my own art here. Finally, we're going to be using these different tools in later classes to see how you paint with different styles, paint with different objects. But the controllers, grips to manipulate the world, one hand paints, one hand controls. Whether you use Vive, Oculus, or Index, the main controls for Tilt Brush, it's all about trying to line things up and paint what you see where you see it. There we go. So this lesson, teaching Tilt Brush, teaching about the controllers themselves. Once you get used to how things work with your hands, then you're going to be much better at putting the lines where you want them, creating the art where you need them. So this class, how to use the controllers. We hope you got a lot out of this. If you enjoyed, feel free to see what else we do on our channels. Likewise, feel free to let us know what sort of art you create. We're always interested in seeing what people do and what they're interested in. Thank you very much. This was Teaching Tilt Brush.